All right, we are back with um, my new friend in uh, British Columbia, Hillary Black. And one of my favorite questions, Hillary, and the best answers I get, um, influencers, they come in all sizes, um, all colors, all places, whatever. Sometimes they're, they're for a split second at the right moment, and sometimes they're longer. Um, share with us, you know, one, two, three influencers that have made a difference for you. Yeah, I was thinking about this last night when I was sitting on the porch, puffing a little bit of high quality sativa in my vaporizer, which we get to do <laughs> legally in Canada. Yes. And I was first thinking about my family. And I was thinking about how my grandfather, Paul McLaughlin, who is no longer with us, he was a war hero and he risked and lost a lot in the war. And I was raised in a family that was taught that we always stand up for the underdog. And I was taught from a young age that as a Canadian, we recognize what our privileges are. And on the global stage, we need to continue to do what we can for, you know, kind of quote underdogs. And that was something that um, was really taught in my family was around standing up to bullies, protecting the kids that were being picked on, that kind of thing sort of growing up. So yeah. I would say my grandpa and my family were sort of my first round of influencers. Mm -hmm. And as I started exploring uh, cannabis justice, there is a whole host of cannabis freedom fighters that came before me, greats whose shoulders I stand upon, you know, people like, you know, Dennis Perone and Jack Herrera and Robert Clark. And, you know, there's all Brownie Mary. There's a, there's all kinds of incredible people who really created a tremendous amount of progress on this front before I sort of took up the baton and carried the work through my generation. And then there are the healers and the practitioners in my life. So without the, you know, the counselors and the wise elders and the spiritual teachers that I try to keep in my life on, on an ongoing basis, I certainly wouldn't be who I am. There's one woman in particular in my past. Her name is Jasmine. And when I had just started the Compassion Club, we were about a year in and we were, you know, selling cannabis like hotcakes to mostly people living with HIV and AIDS and cancer patients. Right. She came along and said, well, what are you doing with all your money? And she's like, why don't we spend all of your profits providing alternative healthcare services? And so that is exactly what we did. And the Compassion Club while it was still civilly disobedient, created this incredible wellness center, um, providing alternative healthcare services to people that otherwise were falling through the cracks in the system. And she taught me about consensus decision making. She taught me about uh, peaceful protest. She taught me about uh, nonviolent communication and conflict resolution skills. She taught me about animal rights. Um, many, 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 like, uh, she was such an influence and you know she is in my life today and 20 years later that woman still holds my feet to the fire on a regular basis <laughs> you know checking in around what i'm doing in canopy and if you know i'm having the influence that i came there to have and i greatly appreciate that and currently i would say one of my greatest influencers is actually my new CEO at Canopy. So three months ago, January, February, March, April, I guess five months ago now, um, David Klein became the CEO of our company. Mm -hmm. And I am watching him have to make some very difficult decisions. So he really came into the company to take us into a new phase. And it needs to start with sort of bringing in the edges of our farm in that, you know, the amazing people who were leading our company and what I would call like the, the first generation, they planted a lot of different crops and spread out, you know, really far. And David kind of has to pull in the edges of what we're cultivating literally and prune the orchard and make sure that he's, you know, creating this company to be, um, to not just survive, but really to thrive. And I'm watching him make some very difficult decisions around layoffs and uh, a restructuring. And those are not easy choices to make, particularly for a group of people that are going to be 
your like professional family moving forward. And I'm watching him walk through this with grace and compassion and patience. And uh, I really admire the way that he is navigating having to make incredibly difficult decisions that I wouldn't want to be responsible for. So uh, I'm learning a lot from him, uh, watching how he's navigating these very difficult first few, few quarters of his leadership in the company. And I have no doubt that it will be a bright, beautiful, successful future, but it's interesting what you can learn in the really challenging times and not just the really bountiful times. Yeah, those are amazing influencers all the way around. Um, and I really appreciate you, you sharing how they, how they impacted you because it, it shows other people that um, we influence people one way or another, even if we're doing it on purpose or not. And it does make, it does make a difference. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that. My absolute pleasure.